So, uh, Kate, here you go. What is something you hate but wished you loved? Something I hate but wished I loved? No, wished you loved. Yeah, wished you Okay, let me think. Let's see. Something I hate that I And you can't say me. Liver and onions. Ew. I don't care for it. I'll eat it, but I don't really care for it. I haven't even eaten it. I don't know. Oh, liver and onions can be good if it's cooked right. It's very tender. It tastes like beef. And the French onion soup that goes around it is awesome. I'll just take your word for it and just go from that. <laughs> okay, so. well, having having said that, that really didn't fit the category then, did it? Because I actually admitted I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you have to hate it, but then you wish you I loved. have to hate it, but wish I loved it. Oh, good God. What would that be? Da, da, da. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Prunes. Oh, well. I'm not fond of prunes. But wait, here you go. It, and this is just me because I'm the same way with apples, and I don't, I can't eat a normal apple like raw. Yeah. But I love apple pie, I love applesauce, and I love apple juice. It has everything to do with texture. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Uh, but not for me. Prunes have a tendency to do the same thing that brand muffins do. They make you poop. They make you poop. So, unless you're really stove up, leave the prunes alone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's always a good thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, not not fond of prunes. There you go. Definitely. So um, I'm looking at some of the list of people that have sent us some stuff, and we actually have a few good ones here. Mm-hmm. We actually have one from Debbie, mm-hmm. and Debbie put, being her pet peeve that she always has is a certain person, which we're not going to name, is being utterly unreliable in their life. Oh, God, I hate people who are unreliable. I just want to choke them to death. I <laughs> really? Do. You just want to go? I, like, I, I just is it like a Homer them. Simpson, like, Bart? Yeah, like, kind of, sort okay. of. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. That's sort of it. Somebody tells me they're going to do something, I expect them to do it. Yep. I have never been a fan of people who either fudge what they're telling you or just simply are that way as a natural part of their life. If you're unreliable, don't come to me. My, I don't have that kind of time. I don't have time to mess with you. Well, yeah, that also, yeah, I, I totally agree with you 100% because that could be with time. That could be with putting together a project. That could be anything that you have to put in there. And I totally understand that because I feel the same way where it's actually happened in my life. And it happens to everybody. It, you just get, People will promise you the world, say, I'll do whatever. And they you give you a marble. Do. Yeah, and they give you a marble. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a, it's a broken marble at that. Well, I don't know. It could be the marble of the world. Paint it and say, here's the marble. I, I promise you the world. That's not what the world I wanted. I wanted the world I'm standing on. Yeah. Yeah. There is a little bit of a difference there. <laughs> exactly. So thank you, Debbie, for submitting this because we, I, we, we love these. We agree. So here's another one that's brought to us by a person named Jay. Okay. And I'm not naming his other person or this mm-hmm. other person in the thing. But always letting one person pay is his pet yeah. peeve. Yeah, and I'll bet he's the one that has to pay all the time, too. <laughs> Hence, that's why this is <laughs> Hence, a pet peeve. Hence, that's why it's a pet peeve. <laughs> I, I mean, here you go. This is this is my con- my consent, and Katie can agree or disagree with me. It's all good. But let's just say if I'm going on a date with someone... Usually the guy pays. Well, now we're in the 21st century. Usually the woman and the guy usually split the check or agreed to do something. I'll pay you, you leave tip or something like that. It's always something now. But if you're going to constantly go out on these things and they constantly say, hey, you're going to pick up that tab for the restaurant. Oh, you're going to pick up that tab for the movie. Oh, you're going to pick up the tab for the bar. It's not even going that far. It's the ones that look in the wallet and go, oh, I didn't bring enough cash. Have you got something you can throw in? Well, that's the we same. Know, and if, we, we know without a shadow of a doubt that person showed up with not enough money. They knew they didn't have enough money. They were relying on their friend or companion to make up the difference on that tab. And I think that's just totally ridiculous. And I know a couple of people that actually do that every mm-hmm. single time. And then it's like, well, what have you done for me lately? Exactly. So, 
Yeah, I get that. And I'm sorry, I agree. I don't like that either because I'm usually the one that gets stuck paying. Yeah, and you can usually work out a deal and say, look, Katie, if you pick up the pizza tonight, I will gladly pick up the food tomorrow night because I don't have the money, but if you can do this. And if you agree to that, that's 100%. And then that's uh, you just were paying. That's Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. If people are smart enough and mature enough to do that. But my experience is, nah, they're not. No, they're not. And just a little tidbit is like back in the day, I used to be the cab driver when I got my license and I used to take all my friends all over the place. Mm-hmm, so Because you had a car and I, you had a license. Exactly. And it's almost like letting that one person pay. So I'm driving all over God's creation, having good time with friends, which I enjoyed mm-hmm. and I loved it. But after some time and after some things had set in... Money was needed for gas for because gas. I have, was driving all over the place. So the moment I started asking for money, oh, well, that was the end of it. And I wasn't even asking for a lot because back then, when I'm going to the 90s. Yeah, a tank of gas was only 75 cents back then. Well, no, that was probably a little bit further because. Okay, that was my time. Yeah, because I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, my time, I, the lowest I've ever seen gas was about 87 cents. And that was one day in the summer. Other night, it was always above a dollar. Mm-hmm. So it was about a dollar a gallon. And that was fine. But I was asking my friends for like two or three dollars saying, hey, just give me two or three dollars. That covers you. And for I'll drive week. you. Yeah. And I'll drive you wherever you want. But week. it wasn't like, hey, give me 20 bucks and I'll take you. No, 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 no. no. So no, now it takes a minimum of 20 bucks to do what you did on five dollars before. Well, it also depends on what part of the state you live in, too, because certain I have to say before I moved down here in Philadelphia we, or from the Philadelphia area, we were at close to four dollars a gallon. Literally, uh, since I moved down here, we've been a little over two dollars, which I will take. Well, you obviously weren't here during the three dollar and eighty five cent period that we went through no but the gas what i find is really funny and this is a pet peeve of mine too is the gas prices shoot up and down dramatically so up north in pa we would go up like maybe five cents three cents here and then maybe once in a while we would do like 10 cents in a while up here it's like goes up 10 goes down five goes up another 20 it's like what the heck i saw gas for a dollar 97 yesterday Yep, I saw I saw the gas down the street on sixty four that was going for and he's got today it was like a dollar ninety eight, and I got closer to Sarasota it was over two dollars I think I saw like the highest was two nineteen and then when I got down to Northport and Venice area it was back down to like a dollar ninety seven ninety eight. Well, somewhere you there. know the pet peeve would be you never know what to count on. However, if you start imposing rules and regs on gas. Where it's the same price everywhere, guess what? Gasp. We're now paying European prices for gas because it's regulated. <laughs> so, oh, man. Yeah, you know, that's part of that socialism thing that we kind of hit on last week. <laughs> yeah, and... Yeah, I, here it is. If you want it, you got to do this. Yeah, and some people do, and I'm not one of them at once. <laughs> I'm going to admit that. <laughs> no, I, I will fight the system at every twist and turn yeah i mean the the biggest thing that people ask me and this is the only time i'm going to say this is people ask me who am i voting for biden or trump it's none of their business no it's none of their business but i i just put it out there and said i am going for the lesser evil and i said i will just go for the lesser evil and do it because i'm going to be frank out there I don't trust any politician. I don't care who you are. I've been on this earth for 45 years, and I've seen all the politicians. All they the all po- suck. Yeah. Until all of you are out of office and gone, and we actually get real people that can actually do the job. Yeah, but these are yeah. aliens. They're never going to die. <gasps> they just go to the spaceship. Wait, wait. Are, are these the same ones that drank the purple Kool-Aid and went away to hell, oh, Bob? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I yeah I I I I can't say anything good about that either. So I'll probably not no. comment on it. So that, that's just another one of those things we don't talk about. But I'm thinking that there is supposed evidence that aliens are among us, and I think that the majority of them are in the Senate and the Congress because there are people there that should have been dead 16 years ago, and yes. they're still hanging. On. Yes, but here's a fun fact for you. Just within the last, I was it, half a year? I, I love to watch Travel Channel, so I watch all the sci-fi stuff and all this other stuff. 
they are now saying Sasquatch is probably an alien because... Oh, they've been saying that for years. No, no, well, this is the first time I've actually heard it. Heard well, it. you should watch as many ancient alien episodes as I've seen. No, but I, what I'm trying to get at is they're saying that it's an alien because he keeps disappearing and you can't see him and all this other stuff. And I thought about it and thought about it and said, oh my God, George Lucas got it right. The Wookiee is a Sasquatch. We have now Chewbacca. I want Chewbacca on my team right now. Okay, and all right, now think about this for just a minute. You've got all of these characters that are supposed to be aliens. Uh, the reason why nobody has ever seen a Sasquatch or whatever you call him, and, you know, kind of, I bet he was from Porkagees. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably what happened. It was pork disease. <laughs> Translated, pork through <laughs> Translated through Google. Translated through Google. No, we're eating up the territory that these beings habitated in for many, many years. They're running out of habitation. They're running out of ways to find food and shelter. So you are definitely going to see them more frequently, just like deer, just like antelope, just like Alligators, boa constrictors, and any other wildlife that is used to being sustained by our world's coverage. We're taking that away every time we build a new complex somewhere. So, another pet peeve. Here you are tearing up the earth for something you really don't need in the first place. You just need to get your butt figured out what you're doing. Well, here's the thing, and obviously I'm human, I'm not an alien, but... Are you sure? Wait, hold on, I'm going to bleed. Wait, because wait, there I'm you go. not. There you go. Here, I'm bleeding hey, red. Hey, that could be fake. Oh, well, it was Halloween a little bit ago, <laughs> uh-huh. so I could have got some fake blood. You could have. But, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I ply this whole thing. Mm-hmm. But what what is, and I saw this on a TV show a while ago, what is man related to most likely? And I'm not talking like... If you had to compare us to an organism on the planet... Are you trying to get me to go Darwinian on you? No, no, no. No. What do you think... And I'm not saying, oh, Joe, we're apes or whatever. But if you had to categorize us as an organism on the planet, what do you think we would be? Mammals. No. <laughs> Technically, if you categorize us in on the Earth, we are like viruses. We take, but we do not give anything back. So if you think about what you just said with That's the Earth... That's true. Oh, go ahead. Give me give me the rebuttal. Okay, <laughs> here's your rebuttal. What about all these agronomists who are out there planting trees that are trying to replenish the earth? Those that are fighting against Amazon's destruction. Come on. There's people out there that are trying to save the earth. They're doing the best thing that they can do. Okay, but... If there's 4.7 billion people on the planet, and let's just say... 3.8 of them are pretty nasty. Yeah. So, if you had to categorize this, and even before the eco-environmentalist activists happened in the later half of the 90s Mm -hmm. and all this other stuff, we were a virus. We were just I would consider humans probably closer to earthworms. We eat, we ate, we shit. We eat, we eat, we shit. Yeah, but... Cut our tail off, another one's going to grow Yeah, but the thing is... Earthworms, when they sh- when they poop, they basically have nutrients that refertilize the earth. We don't poop anything that's going to refertilize. Oh yeah, what do you think all these water treatment plants are for? What do you think all that uh, water they water their lawns with is for? It's reconstituted. Uh, well, yeah. Well, where have you been <laughs> living under a rock? Maybe. Say you are an alien. No. I knew it. No, I could have been Snoopy, but just evicted. (laughs) So anyway, uh, thank you, uh, Jay. I know we kind of got off topic there a little bit, but... Yes, thank you, Jay, for your input. Yeah, and we we want everyone to send us their input. And we agree. That's rude. Yeah, that is. You should talk to this person and tell them to pay. Tell them you ain't going if they ain't paying. Or at least work out some kind of contractual agreement and have them sign it and document it and get it, like, uh, what is it, uh, signified by... You need it notarized? Yeah, get it notarized Uh and be like, yep, it's been done. Uh Uh-huh. Now, I would say just don't go and find new friends. No, you could do that, too. Yeah. (laughs) I I think that would be key. So what else you got? So... I have another one that was submitted to KMK, and this is from Chris. Chris. Yes. And basically, bad table manners is his pet peeve. 
Oh, what? He just doesn't like hearing people chew? No, it doesn't have to do with that. So